Good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu News Analysis by Shankar AS Academy for the date 26th April 2019. The list of articles which has been chosen for today's analysis along with the Chennai, Bengaluru, Tiruvannathapuram and Delhi editions page number are provided here. The handwritten notes in the PDF format and the time stamping for the news articles has been provided in the description box. For the benefit of smartphone users, the time stamping is also provided in the comment section. Let us move on to the first article discussion for the day, which is about the marriage rights of persons of transgender community. This article appears on page 9 in all the four editions. This discussion can be linked to the preliminary syllabus under the areas rights issues in Indian polity and governance and in main syllabus under GS paper 2 under functioning of the executive and the judiciary and also in mechanisms, laws and bodies constituted for the protection and betterment of vulnerable sections. Stepping into the main discussion, on April 22nd of 2019, the Madras High Court gave a path-breaking order in the case Arun Kumar and Shrija versus Inspector General of Registration and others. Arun Kumar, a man, and Shrija, a trans woman, both married on 31st October 2018 in a temple in Tutukudi district of state of Tamil Nadu as per Hindu rights and customs. The joint registrar refused to register the marriage by taking a narrow understanding of the term bride in section 5 of the Hindu Marriage Act of 1955, saying that bride refers only to a woman and does not refer to a trans woman. The couple appealed to the district registrar in Tutukuri district who also refused to register the marriage. Therefore, the couple filed a writ petition under the Article 226 of Constitution of India to direct the concerned authorities to register the marriage. The court highlighted that it has the freedom to apply meaning to terms in the law to suit the present day situations. From the book Principles of Statutory Interpretation, which was authored by Justice G.P. Singh, who is a former Chief Justice of Madhya Pradesh High Court, and finally declared that a marriage solemnized between a male and trans woman, both professing Hindu religion, is a valid marriage in terms of Section 5 of the Hindu Marriage Act of 1955, and the registrar of marriages is bound to register it. The order also pointed to the case of 2014, Nalsa vs. Union of India and others, which stated that it is the right of transgender persons to decide their self-identified gender. The order also emphasized the judicial pronouncement made in US Supreme Court, which was also referred by Supreme Court of India in the judgment of Justice Case Puttaswamy vs. Union of India, which stated that fundamental right to marry is guaranteed to same-sex couples. The case Puttaswamy vs. Union of India case is known for the verdict of Supreme Court in 2017, which said that the right to privacy is protected as an intrinsic part of the right to life and personal liberty under Article 21, and also as a part of the freedoms guaranteed by Part 3 of the Constitution. In 2018, in Navtej Singh Johar vs. Union of India, which was a case about Section 377 of IPC, in which Supreme Court restricted the scope of the case to the decriminalizing aspect of Section 377 only. Hence, the judgment for this case did not have the opportunity to examine the bundle of rights that naturally arise from the striking down of criminalizing the consensual adult sexual relationships of members of LGBT community. Therefore, the author takes inspiration from the present judgment of Madras High Court and states that this judgment is breaking new grounds and has now opened doors for the LGBTQ community to enjoy the civil rights of marriage, succession and inheritance if they marry consensually and in accordance with the existing laws. With this, we come to the end of this article discussion. The displayed question, which is a previously asked question in the preliminary examination in 2018. It has been given for the benefit of the viewers. The practice main question will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the next discussion for the day, which is based on the picture appeared in today's newspaper about the Tiva tribe. This picture appeared on page 18 in all the editions. This discussion can be linked to the preliminary syllabus under the area Social Geography of India. The picture talks about the Kelchava festival of the Tiva tribe. In this context, it becomes crucial to know some facts about the Tiva tribe which will be ex helpful in the examination point of view. Etymologically, the term Ti means water and Va means superior. The community is also known as Lalung in Assamese and colonial literature and they are also referred so in the constitution order of the government of India. 
the term la lun literally can be divided into two parts la means water and lun means rescued the river brahmaputra rescued or gave shelter to the bohemian people hence they were known as la luns they belong to the indo mongoloid ethnicity they are culturally rich tribal community inhabiting the states of assam and meghalaya of northeast india there are two subgroups of tiva tribes that is hill tiva and plain tiva the hill tiva lives in the westernmost areas of kirby anglong district of assam as well as in the northeastern corner of riboy district of meghalaya the hill tribes prefer to be called as lalun but the plain tribes prefer tiva the hill tiva are inferior to the plains in terms of size education and socio economic point of view they speak a tibeto burman language of the bodo garo group plain tiva live on the flatlands of the southern bank of brahmaputra valley mostly in morigaon nagaon and kamrup districts the vast majority speaks assamese as their mother tongue tiva language is still spoken on the foothills and in rare villages of the plains their descent system can be said to be ambilineal that is pertaining to both sides of the family because in most cases the husband goes to live in her wife's family settlement which is known as matrilocal and their children are included in their mother's clan however in about 30% of unions the woman comes to live with her husband in this case children take the name of their father this trend is on the rise under the influence of neighboring populations who are mostly patrilineal so tiwas residing in the plains are patrilineal and hill tiwas are matrilineal rice is the main food of the laluns so they produce rice that is paddy for food and rice beer agriculture is their main occupation their economy is agro based economy with indigenous and traditional method of cultivation the laluns live with nature they spend their time cultivating in the fields fishing in the river and lake and collecting fuel from the forests another source of economy of the lalun people is the piggery and poultry pigs and hens are found in every house in every village as agriculture is the mainstay of the tiva economy the hill tivas practice jhum cultivation that is the shifting cultivation as well as the wet paddy cultivation in a jhum cultivation the jungle is cleared in the dry months before the monsoon starts the trees and shrubs are cut and the entire plot with the trees and shrubs is allowed to dry for a month or so before the rains the plot is set on fire and the ash covered burnt soil is thoroughly hoed and mixed with the ash wet paddy cultivation means the growing of paddy in a flooded field but the plain tivas practice rain fed paddy cultivation tivas under the denomination of lalung has been recognized as a scheduled tribe since the first constitutional order of 1950 for the state of assam tivas do not benefit the st status in the state of meghalaya and they are not included in the particularly vulnerable tribal groups that is pvtgs for that matter no tribe from the state of assam has been notified as pvtg with the object of fulfilling economic educational and linguistic aspirations preservation of land rights as well as socio cultural and ethnic identity tiva autonomous council was created in 1995 the council is not under the sixth schedule of the constitution but it has it has been created by legislating statute of the tribe in the state assembly the most important festivals are three which are bizu sagra misawa and jon bil mela The Bihu festival of Assam is celebrated by the Tiwas as Bisu. So Bisu is nothing but Bihu festival of Assam. Jonbil Mela is the harvesting festival of the Tiwas which is held on the eve of Mag Bihu festival. The mela is held once a year and is renowned for the traditional barter exchanges that takes place between the Tiwas residing in the hills and the plains. The Sagra Misawa is an important spring dance festival of the Tiwas. with this we come to the end of this discussion the displayed prelims question will be discussed in the last session moving on to the next article which is based on the genetically modified brinjal this article appears on page 7 of chennai bengaluru and tiruvannadapuram editions and page 6 of delhi edition this discussion can be linked to the preliminary syllabus under the areas current events of national importance and in general issues on environmental ecology and also in general science this article can be linked to main syllabus under the areas of gs paper 2 in the government policies and interventions for development in various sectors and issues arising out of their design and implementation 
and also under the areas of GS paper 3 in the science and technology developments and their applications and effects in everyday life and also in awareness in the field of biotechnology. Stepping into the main discussion, the article states that genetically modified brinjal which was indefinitely banned by the then environment minister was cultivated illegally in Haryana. It was banned because of the doubts about the long term impact on consumer health and plant biodiversity by the genetically modified crop. Now in this context, to understand why this genetically modified crop was banned, let us know about genetic engineering and the genetically modified crops. These topics are also important in the prelims perspective because they have been asked many times in the preliminary examination. The term genetic engineering is used to describe the process by which the genetic makeup of an organism can be altered using recombinant DNA technology. This involves the use of laboratory tools to insert, alter or cut out pieces of DNA that contain one or more genes of interest. A genetically modified crop in short is GM crop and is also known as transgenic crop. It is a plant that has a novel or unusual combination of genetic material obtained through the use of modern biotechnology. For example, a GM crop can contain a gene that has been artificially inserted instead of the plant acquiring it through pollination. The resulting plant is said to be genetically modified. Developing plant varieties expressing good agronomic characteristics is the ultimate goal of plant breeders. With conventional plant breeding, however, there is little or no guarantee of obtaining any particular gene combination from the millions of crosses generated. Undesirable genes can be transferred along with desirable genes in this method. These problems limit the improvements that plant breeders can achieve and it takes a long time to achieve desired results. In contrast, genetic engineering allows the direct transfer of one or just a few genes of interest between either closely or distantly related organisms to obtain the desired agronomic trait. Not all genetic engineering techniques involve inserting DNA from other organisms. Plant may also be modified by removing or switching off their own particular genes and the crop improvement can be achieved in a shorter time compared to conventional breeding. GM crops are made through a process known as genetic engineering. Genes of commercial interest are transferred from one organism to another as we already saw. Two primary methods currently exist for introducing transgenes into plant genomes. The first involves a device called a gene gun. The DNA to be introduced into the plant cells is coated onto tiny particles of gold and tungsten. These particles are then physically shot onto plant cells and incorporated into the genomic DNA of the recipient plant. The second method uses a bacterium to introduce the genes of interest into the plant DNA. The first generation crops with traits such as insect resistance and herbicide tolerance have proven their ability to lower farm level production costs. They also increase farm profit. The second generation GM crops feature increased nutritional and industrial traits. These crops have more direct benefits to consumers. With every technology, there is a potential risk. The potential risks of GM crops include the danger of unintentionally introducing allergens or other anti-nutritional factors in food. The likelihood of transgenes escaping from cultivated crops into wild relatives is also a potential risk. And another risk is the potential for pests to evolve resistance to the toxins produced by GM crops and also the risk of these toxins affecting non-target organisms is also high. We have seen the background very clearly now. Let us see some facts about brinjal and Bt brinjal also. Brinjal which is also known as eggplant and aubergine in North America and Europe respectively is a very important common man's vegetable in India and is also called by some as king of vegetables. Brinjal is grown on nearly 5,50,000 hectares in India, making the country the second largest producer after China. It is an important cash crop for more than 1.4 million small, marginal and resource poor farmers. Brinjal being a hardy crop that yields well even under drought conditions is grown in almost all parts of the country. Hardy here means a plant's ability to survive in a specific climate zone even through the cold of winter. Major brinjal producing states include West Bengal, Orissa and Gujarat and Bihar. Brinjal is prone to attack from insect pests 
and diseases the most serious and destructive of which is the fruit and shoot borer in short fsb fsb feeds predominantly on brinjal and is prevalent in all brinjal producing states it poses a serious problem because of its high reproductive potential fsb larvae cut into tender shoots and fruits which retards plant growth makes fruits unsuitable for the market and unfit for human consumption fruit damage is also high as 95% and losses of up to 70% in commercial plantings have been reported so far fsb resistant brinjal or bt brinjal was developed using a transformation process bt brinjal incorporates the cry1 ac gene or cry1 ac gene expressing insecticidal protein to act as a resistance against fsb the cry1 ac gene is sourced from the soil bacterium bacillus thuringiensis this is why it is known as bt brinjal the bt is attached from bacillus thuringiensis when this is ingested by the fsb larvae the fsb larvae dies a few days later bt brinjal was developed by the maharashtra hybrid seeds company mahiko the company used a dna construct containing the cry1 ac gene bt brinjal is the first food crop under evaluation for commercial release in india since its development in 2000 the crop has undergone rigorous scientific evaluation to assess its food safety environmental safety human and animal health safety and biodiversity also the regulation of ge crops in india comes under the provisions of the environment protection act of 1986 which was passed to ensure the protection and in and improvement of the environment the genetic engineering appraisal committee is the apex regulator housed under the ministry of environment and forest which is responsible for environmental release through field trials and commercial approvals of genetically modified organisms and crops the first genetically engineered crop commercialized in india was bt cotton the introduction and spread of bt cotton in india has given rise to many problems by 2006 many reports began exposing various problems experienced by bt cotton farmers despite the industry's glowing testimonies about the ge crop fact finding teams visited various regions where bt cotton was being grown and reported the occurrence of new diseases and pests in the fields high costs of cultivation uneven crop performance crop failure and no reduction in pesticide use they also found incidence of mortality and morbidity in sheep that had grazed in bt cotton fields this is why there was protests everywhere in india to ban the gm crops and thus it was indefinitely banned by the then environment minister gm crops research and development in india include rice wheat cotton maize eggplant mustard soybean chickpea sorghum and groundnut with this we come to the end of this article discussion the displayed questions has been previously asked in the preliminary examination and it is provided for the benefit of the viewers the displayed prelims question will be discussed in the last session moving on to the next article which is about the bharat stage 6 standards this article appears on the front page of the newspaper in all the four editions the aspects of this article will be helpful in your preliminary examination in current events of national importance and in economic and social development and could also be linked with general issues on climate change and in main syllabus it can be linked under gs paper 2 in government policies in various sectors and issues arising out of their design and implementation and also in gs paper 3 under indian economy and issues related to mobilization of resources before entering into the discussion about vehicular emission and auto fuel quality norms let us have a look at why such norms are important vehicular emissions are a large contributor to airborne population nitrogen oxides benzene and other uncombusted hydrocarbons combustion products of sulfur and particulate mat- matter of finer sizes are components of tailpipe emissions tailpipe emission denotes the emission from the exhaust pipe located at the rear end of a motor vehicle these emissions are potential enough to cause respiratory illness and can create conducive conditions for cancer and carcinogenic action vehicular emissions are also contributors to greenhouse gas emissions as carbon dioxide emission happen through vehicular emission note that every liter of diesel that is burned produces about 2.66 kg of carbon dioxide 
Thus, the overwhelming concern for public health is the primary reason for mandating stringent fuel and emission standards that imply huge investments in refineries and in the automobile sector. These emission standards are also called as Bharat Stage Norms, shortly BS Norms. Bharat Stage Emission Standards are norms instituted by the government to regulate the output of air pollutants from motor vehicles such as two-wheelers, three-wheelers, four-wheelers, both light and heavy vehicles of four-wheelers. Even though the vehicular emission norms in India was first introduced in 1991, the fuel specification based on environmental consideration was notified for the first time in the country by the Ministry of Environment and Forests in April 1996 only. And based on the Supreme Court order of April 1999, then Ministry of Surface Transport notified the Bharat Stage 1 norms and Bharat Stage 2 vehicle emission norms in April 1999. When the norms were introduced in 1999, BS1 was notified for introduction in entire India and BS2 for national capital region and other metros. In 2000, BIS 2000 vehicle emission norms came into effect. In October 2003, the Ministry of Petroleum and Natural Gas released auto fuel policy. This policy was based on the report submitted by Mr. Mashelkar Committee, which submitted its report by August 2002. Therefore, in line with the auto fuel policy of 2003, fuel conforming to BS3 norms was introduced in 13 major cities in the year 2005, while BS2 fuel was made available in all other places in the country. At this time, BS1 quality fuel phased out. From April 2010, BS4 fuel was implemented in 13 major cities, which was later expanded to 26 more cities, and Basel 3 fuel made available in the rest of the country from September 2010. In January 2016, the Ministry of Road Transport and Highways has decided to leapfrog from BS4 to BS6 emission norms directly by April 1, 2020. And in October 2018, Supreme Court stated its final word on BS standards that no Bharat Stage 4 vehicle shall be sold across the country from April 1, 2020. Note that the auto fuel vision and policy of 2025 given by the expert committee chaired by Saumitra Choudhury has recommended implementation of BS6 norms only by 2024, but it was advanced by the government to April 2020 when every time the policy related to the vehicle emissions and auto fuel quality advances from one standard to another, several enrichments in the fuel and the vehicle are done to meet the standards, so that the new standard will have prescriptions for less health impact comparable to the previous stage norms. From April 1, 2020, BS6 norms are to be implemented. This means that the automobile fuel quality of gasoline, petrol, and diesel must be in that prescribed standard. Also, the automobile vehicles that include two-wheeler, three-wheeler and four-wheeler vehicles should also to be upgraded to the standard of BS6. This requires serious and heavy investments for oil refineries and automobile manufacturing industries. Now the news is that Maruti Suzuki, the largest car manufacturer in India, has decided to discontinue selling diesel vehicles of BS4 standards from April 1. 2020. The company has planned to discontinue as it expects low demand for diesel vehicles once BS6 standards come into force. This is because to manufacture cars to the standards of BS6 norms, more investment is required, which means more production cost and it will significantly increase the price of cars in a certain way. Hence, there will be a low demand expectation for diesel vehicles from April 1, 2020. With this, we come to the end of this discussion. Moving on to the next article, which is about the Centre's grant to cell-based meat research. This news article appears in page number 6 in Chennai and Thiruvannadapuram editions and in page 5 of Delhi edition. This news article will be helpful in your prelims preparation under current events of national and international importance under general science. And in your mains preparation in general studies paper 3 under food processing and related industries in India, their scope and significance, location, upstream and downstream requirements and also supply chain management. And also under science and technology developments and their applications and effects in everyday life. This news article discusses about what is meant by cell-based meat 
and about the recent initiatives and funding by the central government in promoting cell based meat in India. The Department of Biotechnology under Ministry of Science and Technology has decided to fund 4.5 crore rupees for two years as an initial grant to take up cell based meat research. The research would be conducted by National Research Centre on Meat, which comes under Indian Council of Agriculture Research, in partnership with Centre for Cellular and Molecular Biology, which operates under the aegis of CSIR, that is, Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. This research would be conducted at Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology located in Hyderabad in the state of Telangana. This funding decision comes almost a year after the CCMB in association with the Humane Society International in short HSI and Good Food Institute in short GFI held the first ever meet to discuss clean meat last year. If you see here the Atal Incubation Center of the CCMB has been partnering with the HSI to promote clean meat sector in India. Their aim is to feed 10 billion people by, by 2050 by creating a platform for tasty affordable protein. Two institutions have been mentioned in the news namely Humane Society International and Good Food Institute. Before moving to know about what is meant by cell based meat, let us know about these two. Humane Society International works with an aim to create a humane and sustainable world for all animals and also people through education, advocacy and the promotion of respect and caring. They have centers in major countries of the world including India. Coming to Good Food Institute, it is a US based non-profit company that promotes plant based meat, dairy and eggs and also cell based meat. Let us now move on to see what is meant by cell based meat. They are also called as clean meat. They are identified as an alternative source to the conventional meat that the world consumes at present. Clean meat is produced through cellular agricultural technique or method where cells are sourced from animals and are cultivated into meat. Let us see the technique in detail. The muscle tissue is harvested from the animal. These tissues are cut into small pieces in order to separate the muscle fibers from cells. Now we have obtained the individual animal cells. These cells are separated and cultured. Cells start dividing on their own. These cells grow into tissues. Then from the tissue, the cells grow into strands. A single strand can have more than 1 trillion cells. When enough strands are produced, and then they are layered together to form a meat portion of different shapes and size as per the requirements. This meat is called the cell cultured meat or clean meat. So remember clean meat is produced by cellular agriculture technique which is the one described here. This clean meat is a source of protein only and not any other nutrient like fat which is present in a conventional meat. Some of the advantages of the clean meat are Clean meat is a sustainable source of protein that is produced without harming the environment. It is claimed to be equivalent to the conventional meat in terms of taste and feel. This meat can be scaled to require volume, size and shape as per the customer's requirement. Animals will not be killed or tortured for the production of clean meat. Thus, it ensures animal welfare. Scientists have also said that the clean meat would have considerable health benefits to the consumers. Since clean meat is culture, cultured in labs, it would reduce the risk of food borne illnesses, which is possible during conventional meat consumption. These are some of the advantages of clean meat. There are also some disadvantages. Clean meat is likely to face resistance from the consumers because of misconceptions and distrust over the way they are produced. The advent of clean meat will largely affect the conventional meat sector in India in terms of employment which will lead to huge job losses. This clean meat is a pure source of protein. It does not contain any fat or bones. Hence the taste is more likely to be compromised. The animal fat gives a significant taste to the dish that is cooked and with excess supply of clean meat overconsumption is a possible phenomenon. This might lead to obesity in the long run. These are some of the disadvantages if clean meat comes to the market. With this, we come to the end of the discussion. The split prelims and mains question will be discussed in the last session. Moving on to the last article for the day, which is based on the vaccination status. 
This article appears on page 18 in all the editions. The information in the article can be linked to the preliminary syllabus in current events of international importance and also in general science. The article is about a few figures released by WHO during the sidelines of World Immunization Week of 2019, which is from 24th April to 30th April of 2019 and it is observed every year in the last week of April. The shocking fact is that in the year 2016, around 10% of the children in the world did not get vaccinated. More worrying fact is that most of the children who were not vaccinated are living in poorest, marginalized and conflict affected communities, which highlights how children are potentially vulnerable in poverty and conflict affected countries. We know that if children miss the first dose of DTP vaccine, then they are at serious risk of diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, which would lead to death. And here DTP stands for diphtheria, tetanus and pertussis. Also, the global vaccination coverage is just 85 percentage and there has been no significant improvements in the recent years. Although in 2017, the number of children immunized is the highest ever. One should know the advantages of immunization, which is very important. The advantages are, it prevents illness, disability and death from diseases which are prevented by vaccine, like diseases such as diphtheria, tetanus, pertussis, measles, mumps, rotavirus diarrhea, rubella, pneumonia, hepatitis and also cervical cancer. Let us know some facts about WHO that is the World Health Organization which was set up on 7th April 1948 and when its constitution came into force that day is celebrated as World Health Day. Just keep in mind that the World Health Day and the World Immunization Week are in the month of April. The headquarters of WHO is in Geneva, Switzerland. The same is also the headquarters for World Meteorological Organization and World Trade Organization. With this, we come to the end of the discussion. The displayed prelims question will be discussed in the next session. Moving on to the last session for the day, that is practice questions discussion session. The first question is, with reference to the people of the Diva tribe, consider the following statements. First statement. They are also known as Lalung and they practice Jum cultivation. Second statement, they are notified as scheduled tribes in the state of Assam and Meghalaya. Third statement, they are listed as particularly vulnerable tribal group. Which among the above statements is or are correct? Keep in mind that we have to look for the correct statement. The first statement is correct as we have already discussed in our analysis that the Tiva are also known as Lalung and they practice Jum cultivation that is the shifting cultivation in which they slash and burn the forest and they cultivate after that. The second statement states that they are notified as scheduled tribes in the state of Assam and Meghalaya which is wrong statement. They are notified as scheduled tribes only in the state of Assam and not in Meghalaya even though Meghalaya has a significant population of Tiva tribe. The third statement is also wrong as we have already discussed that no tribe from the state of Assam has been listed as particularly vulnerable tribal group. So the correct answer for this question is option A, one only. Question second, consider the following statements with reference to the genetic engineering appraisal committee. First statement, it gives final approval for GM crops in India. Second statement, it comes under the Department of Biotechnology under Ministry of Science and Technology. Which of the above statements is or are correct? So keep in mind, we have to look for the correct statement. The first statement is wrong as the final approval for GM crops will be given by Ministry of Environment and Forest and not the Genetic Engineering Appraisal Committee. The second statement is also wrong as GEAC comes under the Ministry of Environment and Forest and not under the Ministry of Science and Technology. So the correct answer for this question is option D, neither one nor two. Next question is consider the following statements regarding clean meat that is recently seen in the news. First statement, clean meat is produced through cellular agriculture technique where cells are sourced from animals and cultivated into meat. Second statement, it will contain all the nutrients that are present in a conventional meat which includes proteins and fat. Third statement, this cell based meat research is funded by Department of Biotechnology which comes under the Ministry of Agriculture. Which of the above statements is or are correct? So, Keep in mind, we have to look for the correct statement. The first statement is correct as we have discussed that 
in the cellular agriculture technique. The second statement is wrong since the clean meat is a source of protein only. Clean meat does not contain any fat or bones. The third statement is also wrong because Ministry of Agriculture is the misleading phrase here. You might get confused seeing the first statement where it discusses about the cellular agriculture technique. Department of Biotechnology comes under Ministry of Science and Technology not under Ministry of Agriculture. So the correct answer for this question is option A, one only. So whenever you study a science topic, try to know the basic concepts which is necessary for your preliminary exam preparation. Next question is consider the following statements. First statement, the World Immunization Week 2019 is observed in the last week of April every year. Second statement, as per WHO, the global vaccination coverage remains at 85% with no significant changes during the past few years. Which of the above statements is or are correct? As usual, you have to keep in mind, you have to look for the correct statement. The first statement is correct as we have seen that the World Immunization Week is usually observed in the last week of April. For this year, it was observed from 24th of April to 30th of April with the theme for 2019 as protected together vaccines work. The second statement is, is also correct as the WHO has stated that the global vaccination coverage remains at 85%. If this improves, an additional 15 lakh people could be saved from death. Therefore, the correct answer to this question is option C, both 1 and 2. Now, let us see one main question based on GS paper 2. The question is, the Indian judiciary has been playing a progressive role in the evolution of rights of transgender persons and the sexual minorities. Discuss. Here, you shall highlight the three judgments by the Supreme Court. One in Nalsa vs. Union of India and others in 2014 about the rights of transgender persons to decide their self-identified gender and the reference of fundamental right to marry is guaranteed to same-sex couples which is uttered by US Supreme Court and quoted in Justice K.S. Puttaswamy vs. Union of India in 2017 and also decriminalizing the consensual adult sexual relationship of members of LGBTQ community in the Navtej Singh Johar vs. Union of India case. Also highlight the recent verdict given by Madras High Court which we discussed in the article. Discuss them alongside the progressive nature of the judgments. Now let us see one main question based on GS paper 3 which is what do you mean by the term clean meat? How would it revolutionize the food system across the world? Explain clean meat is a cell based meat and then the technique of its production. Also enlist the advantages of clean meat that we have discussed in our analysis session and tell that these factors that would revolutionize the food system across the world including India. You can end your answer with potential disadvantages of clean meat as well in one or two lines. Don't forget to like, comment and share and subscribe to Shankar AS Academy YouTube channel for more updates on UPSC Civil Service Examination Preparation.